changing, Dennis. The light is changing. I don't know. Is he pulling me over? Is he taking the intersect? He's pulling me over. I'll take care of it. You guys finish this escort. Yes, sir. How about your license registration, please? You guys are not police officers. You are not authorized to cross the double yaw line and drive on the opposite right of the roadway I, like that. I pulled behind you. I watched you cross over the double yaw, and you and your partner both crossed over yeah, the double Yeah, because that car was pulling out around You're us, not and we had. authorized to go out on the opposite side of the roadway. Officer, I was only doing that because that car pulled out. That's the only reason, sir. Go, Manny, go, Ken. Just you guys finish the escort. I only did that because that guy pulled out right in front of us, sir. I, I would have never crossed the double yellow line had that ha not happened. Units move as hard as you can, as fast as you can. Stay on your horns and sirens. This is a police escort. I need units, I need units, I need units. Watch your movers, Alan, stay on your horns, stay on your horns. Stay on your horns, stay on your horns. Alan, talk to me, where are you depleted? I got vehicles jumping in everywhere. I need units now. Roger, be advised, be advised. Stay on your horns, use your sirens, I don't care. No. Hey, I got movers on the right, on the right, three times, and on the left. Pull out right in front of you. Get on your horns, guys. Fucking movers everywhere, dog. Fucking everywhere. Yes, how many cars? Motor one's moving. No, no. The band is in. Not your heart is so fucking unit now. Roger Allen, stay on your horn, brother. Light cycling, they're through a light that cycled. Okay, just do the best you can. Keep moving forward. I need units. We are too far extended. You, I need you to turn. Let's go. You, get over now! Get over now! Get over now! Motor one's moving. I'm out of gas! I only did that because that guy pulled out right in front of us, sir. I, I would have never crossed the double yellow line had that ha not happened. You drive down the median, driving through the safety zones, then you cross the completely over the double yellow line and then pull back in behind me. Okay. Yes, sir. Registration for the bike. Oh, uh, the registration's at the office. Uh, wait, wait, maybe not. Hold on, let me double check. Registration, but you're the one I for mine. Mr. Lovat, Nebraska. Yes, sir. See, I have all these registrations. I, I don't know why we don't have this one. Fucking bullshit. Hold tight. Here comes the Eagle PD. Light's changing, Dennis. The light is changing.
I don't know, is he pulling me over? Is he taking the intersect? He's pulling me over. You guys need to make sure you guys move up the road carefully. He's on the phone with Orange County right now, letting him know you guys are coming. So you better make sure you follow your P's and Q's. <clears throat> yeah, 10 he stopped me. He said, because I, he was in the left turning lane, I went up and around him to take the relieve uh, Dennis from the intersection. A double, yeah, it was two lanes, and I went into the right lane to go up around him because he was going extremely slow. So, it's okay, we're good. Make sure you get somebody way ahead of all the way down at John Young and uh, 50 Dylan in front of Orange County. Make sure you get somebody down there. Try to get the light green. Here you go, German. Two citations for the violations. Okay. Let the bosses know. Coming through Eatonville, they'll start obeying the laws. People are gonna start going to jail. Roger. Can I ask a question, sir? Yes. When you got into the funeral escort, which is against 316, also, when you let when you pulled out, you let that car that pulled out and almost hit me, and that's why I went across the lines. When you did that, you allowed the car that was behind you to pull out, and I had to go around that vehicle. I pulled out in front of the cars that were no longer had signals on. I was the car that passed me was the last one that was in my head. No, sir. No, sir. The last vehicle was our unit. And when you did that, you violated 316 also. And by doing that, you almost had me get into an accident. And I just went around that vehicle. You're admitting that you were recklessly, you were driving recklessly. No, sir. I. No, sir. When I when I went around my officer that was in that intersection, okay, I was coming up the line, and then when you pulled out, the car that was behind you pulled out, and that's when I had to dump and around that vehicle because he rolled right out with you. He didn't even sit at the stop sign. Yeah, it was two lanes, and I went into the right lane I had to go up around him because he was going extremely slow. So. Dispatch Melissa, how can I help you? Hi, um, I'm, I'm calling to report a, a weird incident. Um, I was just picking up my daughter from preschool on uh, Daniels Road. I was at uh, Lake Daniels and just up from 50. Mm -hmm. And um, we pulled out onto the road and we heard emergency vehicles coming. So we pulled to the side mm -hmm. and the, the police, it looked like a police car, but it had different colored crazy lights on it and sirens. Mm -hmm. And there were like one and then another went by. It was probably four of them. And the, the guy pulled over and was trying to pull people over. And he got out of his car and was yelling at me to get out of my car. And it said Metro State something protection on, this, on the vehicle. They were not police vehicles. Okay. And how long ago did that happen? This happened less than 10 minutes ago, like five minutes ago. And it scared us so much. And so I thought he wasn't talking to me. Like I pulled over and just kept going. All the other cars were doing the same thing. And then he speeds it up again, and the guy was screaming out of his window, pointing at me, get out of your car. And I was like, I am not, I have two kids in my car. I, right. I'm not, I didn't do any, you know, this guy was not a police officer. Okay. Are you still in the area? And he just drove on. Since I didn't get out of the car, he just drove past, he just went on. So okay. I know he wasn't any kind of. And what, what did the car say? They, it said Metro State something protection, like service protection or something. And all the vehicles said that. They looked very fancy and painted, and they had, like, they looked like some sort of, you know, official something. But mm -hmm. it was not a Winter Garden Police Department. It wasn't Orange County. Which way, I don't know which what way were they going? They were headed toward Winter Garden Village. Okay. I don't know what direction that is. You said it was about 10 minutes ago? Yeah, a little less than 10 minutes ago, because I, I just was so flabbergasted. I, I, I didn't want to keep going that direction because that's the way they were going. They were, they were, it looked like they were causing this chaos. Mm -hmm. So I turned around and I went to, to Colonial because we were so nervous. Right. Did you want to meet with an officer? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm telling you everything I know. Right. Well, it's up to you if you want to meet or not. Um, no, I need to take my kids home. They're okay. a little What is your name? My name is Laura. Can someone give you a call back to let me know if they've seen or heard anything? Because I want to know what that was. Okay. Okay, I will have an officer give you a call back. And you said it was on Daniels just south of 50? Yeah, okay. it's toward Winter Garden Village. And they were all sirens and crazy lights. I mean, it was weird. Okay.
Okay, now I see another vehicle. Hold on. I don't know if that's a real one. Case number 2019, DR 694, Jennifer Cameron-Burton and Jeremy Dwight. Sir, if you could please raise your hand. Jeremy Charles DeWitt, Your Honor. Hold on one second. We're going to swear you in. Yes, ma'am. Do you solemnly swear and affirm testimony of your Honor's case today to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You can be seated. All right, sir, what's your name? Jeremy Charles DeWitt, Your Honor. All right, sir, the petitioner is not present, and therefore the case is dismissed without prejudice. It doesn't affect your current status um, with the active warrant, but as to this case, it is dismissed. Okay? Your Honor, I'm, I'm sorry to bug you, and I understand you Hold have a Hold on one second. Sure. Hold on one second. Sure. First of all, you're not bugging me. Okay. It's my job to listen. Number two, as you heard in the video today, everything that happens here in our courtroom is recorded yes, and it can easily be obtained by the state attorney's office or by law enforcement. Roger. Okay, so anything you say, you need to be really careful about making sure you protect your Fifth Amendment rights. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. What I'd like to say is, I, is there a, here's the problem. I am a sex offender. I committed this crime when I was a kid. I was 25, met a girl at a bar with a fake ID, but that doesn't matter. At the end of the day, I'm screwed. I own my own business and I run my own business. This young lady unfortunately came into my life and started making false accusations. Sir, I don't have jurisdiction over that case. I understand. So what exactly, what not, exactly are you asking from me? The f I went and filed a restraining order before she filed hers, when the police department contacted her, my judge denied mine because I'm a criminal. In the state of Florida, I don't have rights. But anyways, they approved hers and gave her the, the and I understand you're dismissing it, but the problem is, is she constantly keeps filing false reports. Probably the reason why I'm in cuffs right now. She continues to file false reports like she did to the FBI saying that I was gonna kill a bunch of people and so on and so on. So. My issue is, is although you denied it, I, I almost kind of want it because it, it kind of makes her have to stay away from me and do the same rules as that restraining order. But if, if I can't do that, then I, I, I want to find a way that we can prosecute her for continuing to do this because I guarantee you, Your Honor, right now I'm sitting in handcuffs because of a failure to register. That's not true. And I'm sure once they pull it, they'll see that it's not true, just like the last one. All right, so you know, sir, here's the deal. With my law degree, I can do two things. Uh -huh. I can be your lawyer or I can be your judge, but I can't be both at the same time. Right. So I can't tell you how to achieve legally what you're seeking to achieve, um, but I would encourage you to talk to a lawyer or talk to the state attorney's office or talk to law enforcement about your concerns, but in so doing, please be mindful of your own Fifth Amendment rights. As to doing anything with her case, since she's not here, I don't have any jurisdiction or authority to take any action on the case. And so I'm sorry, but um, I'm kind of limited with what I can do today for you, sir. And I understand, and that's the problem. She keeps filing reports like this, and then she doesn't show. And then, unfortunately, because I'm a criminal, I'm, I'm automatically on the firing block. Because I'm not responding to that does not mean I agree with that statement. Well, Good luck to you, sir. Thank Good you, luck to you, sir. Get in the car and move up the wrong side of the road and get to me now. Your light's green artillery, get to me now. Get to me now. Move, move, move. Stay on your horn. Stay on your horn. You got movers. Stay on your horn. You got a mover on the left. Blue sedan pulling out right from a blind building. Come on. Dude, get the fuck out of the way. Get out of the way. Move your funky car, dog. Dumb fuck. Dumbass. This is a police escort. Stop! You! Get over now! Get over now! Get over now! Where the fuck are you going? Get your fucking car out of the way now! I'm out of gas!
Detective Mastrangelo. Today's date is June 4th, 2018, approximately now 10, 16 hours. I'm here at the Orange County Sheriff's Office located at 2500 West Colonial Drive. Also present for this interview is Detective James Edmondson of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. And I'm here with Miss Jennifer Burton. Okay. Uh, we're here today in reference to a... Um, actions that were taken after an investigation that was done on uh, sexual offender Jeremy DeWitt. Um, Ms. Burton's a uh, witness in this investigation. If you raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Okay. Uh, the questions I'm going to ask you are, in, are basically in regards to uh, whatever took uh, place after an investigation was done already on Mr. DeWitt and any involvement that you had with him, specifically uh, what kind of sort of contact, who initiated the contact, what was the extent of the contact. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Um, as you know, Mr. DeWitt was arrested um, back in April of 2018. Um, since then, what has been your contact with him? Um, well, the first contact that I had with him was actually through his attorney. Um, he, Jeremy, was arrested, and someone that I knew that was working at the jail um, told me that... Um, you know, everything that happened when he was arrested and they made it seem as though he um, was having like a really um, hard time in the jail. Um, and I had spoken to the prosecutor and she said she didn't know anything because she didn't have any paperwork. You know, I'm going to stop you real quick. Um, when you said you had contact with Mr. or Mrs., who's the lawyer that you talked to? Um, his name is Amir. Amir. And when approximately was this contact that you had with him? I maybe two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. Two, three weeks. Did you call him or he called you? I contacted him. Okay, did he ask to be contacted? No. Okay, so you initiated contact with him. Why did you initiate contact with him? Because I had heard that Jeremy was having a hard time in jail and I felt, I felt bad for him. And I wanted to see if... Everything was okay. Okay. Um, what did the, the attorney say? Um, he said, well, I was surprised he even spoke to me. He told me that he was fine and um, he wanted me to come in and speak to him. And he was trying to schedule something for me to talk to him. And I asked him if it was okay. He said that he was allowed to speak to witnesses um, in a case. Um, we never... Met him. I've never met him, um, and I didn't know that during that time um, that I'd reach out to him. There was like a space in between, and I'd um, I logged back into my um, Kick account, and I saw that Jeremy had um, sent me a message. I don't know if his attorney told him that I reached out to him, but he sent me a message. So. Okay. Um, all right. So you had contact with Mr. Dewitt's attorney, uh, did you, and that was just via phone. Is that what I understand, or did you yeah, actually? I never met in person. Okay, so that was via phone. Um, once you had contact with him, he, did he use, try and arrange an appointment with you? Right, he did. He did. And did you make that appointment? Um, to meet in person. Yes. Yeah, I made the appointment, but I never went to meet him. Okay, so you never went to go see him. Right. You said that you had contact with the state attorney. Which state attorney did you talk to? Sarah, uh, Sarah Hatch. Sarah Hatch. Is it possible? Okay, Sarah Hatch. Yeah. When did you first make contact with Miss Hatch? Okay. Um, I don't. I. I. I don't remember the date. I know that. Um, was it before or after you made contact with Mr. DeWitt's attorney? I think it was before. I'm okay. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was before. I can't say for certain, but I'm pretty sure it was before. Um, and when I had spoken to her, like I said, she said she still hadn't received the packet from um, law enforcement. And she asked for my information, and I gave it to her. So that was it. Okay. Have you any uh, any other contact with Miss Hatch? Yes, I have. Okay. What was that? What was the extent of that? Um, I think I contacted her again to see um, 
if she'd receive the packet, and I think she said no again. And then I reached out to her the last time I spoke to her. I was telling her about my housing situation and how um, Jeremy was saying that he would help me if I had changed his statement. And she put me on hold, and then she said she was going to email me, and she did email me, um, like, a list of, like, shelters. Um, and she just told me not to accept, you know, anything from him. That was it. Okay. You then said you had contact with Mr. DeWitt via kick, or he said you, you reached out to you after, sometime after you had a contact with his attorney. What exactly was the extent of that conversation on kick? Um, I don't know, we just talked about the case. I mean, that was the first thing that he wanted to talk about. He so you actually called him? Or was we it talk nice? Yeah, we talked on the, on we the talked phone. on the phone, right. Okay, got it. And um, he wanted um, he wanted to know why you know like why I told them he was most concerned about why I'd said that um, or made it seem as though we weren't still in contact after I found out he was a sex offender he was upset about that and then um, he was upset because um, he said that they were like airsoft guns I didn't know that they were airsoft guns and he told me that they were real guns. Um, and the other thing was he was upset because he said that um, he never pulled anyone over, um, but I, that's not true. That's a lie. So he was he didn't know why I told you all that, um, and he just told me that you know I told him about like what was going on with me and the living situation, and you know he said you know if we fix it, then he'd be able to help me with that. But right now he had to put money aside. Um, so that when he got, because he said he was going to prison, so he said when he got out of prison, he would have money um, stored away. Okay, was this over one contact or many contacts with him? Sorry. Um, uh, are you talking about from... The, with that conversation, did that conversation come out of one phone call or multiple phone calls? I mean, calls? it was multiple phone calls. Okay, so you started to, and you started talking to him approximately how long ago? Maybe three, two and a half, three weeks ago. Okay. So shortly after you contacted his attorney, he then he reached out to you via kick, and then you guys then initiated via phone right. calls, talking back to one another again. Right. All right. And at some point, you told him about your living conditions, and he offered to pay for some sort of housing arrangement, if I understand this correctly, um, as long as... Did he want you to switch your testimony, not testify, or what? So I understand that clearly. He wanted me to come in to Amir's office, and he wanted me to, I guess, I don't know how that goes, but he wanted me to make a, a new statement to Amir, and then Amir would notarize it, I guess, and mm -hmm. then send it to the state attorney's office. So he wanted me to take out the parts, like I said before, about the guns and the parts about the... Um, about pulling people over. Um, he was concerned about that because he said that even though there were no charges for that, that they could still add charges and that because that was in there that he wouldn't get a plea deal. Okay. And you definitely did not do that or you did do that? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Okay. <laughs> have you physically seen Jeremy? Yes. Okay. How many times have you seen Mr. DeWitt? Um, maybe three. What was the first time? Um, oh God. Um, oh, uh, at my, one of the hotels I was staying in. Okay, he so you, you were, you were evicted. Me. This is after you were evicted. Right, he met me in the, um, parking lot. Did he pay for the hotel, or did you pay for the not hotel? That, not that one, no. Okay, so you paid for the hotel. Okay, he met you there, you guys coordinated it, so he knew you were there, or he showed up, or what? No, he, we, we coordinated that. Okay, so what happened at that, that meeting? We just sat in the parking lot, and because it was raining, and we just talked about everything that happened, and he wanted to know 
all the details about um, what, you know, the way that I came in the first time. So. Was that extent of it? How long did that contact last? I think it was less than an hour. Okay. All right. And that was at your first hotel that you stayed at. You say this is about two and a half, three weeks ago. Yeah. Then what was the next time after that? Um, it was at a, another hotel. No, what, actually. What hotel? Um, he actually um, picked me up from work. Um, and then we went to a restaurant, and then I always said he went to my hotel. Uh, that hotel was, um, kind of, uh, it was a Holiday Inn, um, by Universal. Okay. And this was about how long ago? Like two weeks. I mean, I keep saying two or three, but yeah, I think it was like two weeks ago. Was it shortly after the first, within a day or two after? Um... Like it was probably within like three, three or four days. I can't remember exactly. Exactly. Okay, so you, you met with him, and then three or four days later again, you met with him at another hotel. Did he come to your room? Did you stay in the parking lot? Where did you meet? No, he came to my room. Okay, and what happened at that contact room? Um, I mean, we talked, and then we we had sex. So. Okay. Now, this hotel room, was this one you paid for? No. Okay. Now, you then said you saw him a third time. What was that? That was, um, okay, so it was the Holiday Inn, and then he paid for the Double Tree. I never saw him at the Double Tree. He did that over the, um, online through Priceline. Um, and How long did you stay at that hotel? I think it was like two nights, and then. Do you remember the approximately the dates? I have a screenshot on my phone. If you want me to get it? I'll have you text that to me when we're done. Okay. All right. You say that. Okay. What happened? You said you did not see him at all. No, no I never saw him. Okay. Were you talking to him all throughout this time via phone? No, we actually didn't talk for a week. Um, was there something going on? A no. reason why did you end it? Um. No, I just. I just, we just didn't talk. Um, I think he called me or I called him and then he said he was going to call me back and then he never did and I never reached out to him because I was stressed out with what was going on. And so I just never talked to him. When was the last time you talked to Mr. Joy? Um, this morning. Does he know you're here? No. <laughs> he was, no, he was really said no. Okay, so what did he, you guys talk about today? Um, so I guess I should backtrack a little bit. Um, so, like, during this time frame, um, this is when he was, like I said, we had talked for a week. And so um, I was still staying in the hotels, and then um, he had told me that he was, going to help me as again if I fixed it um he was mad at me because I hadn't done anything to fix the situation and so you know I told him that I was gonna you know I was gonna try but I was afraid of getting into trouble for you know changing the story because what happened happened and I don't know if I should say but I sent you some stuff you know showing you the things that he said um and so, you know, I just felt like um, I'd spoken to, um, oh God, I don't know what he's called, like an investigator. Um, his name is Jeremy something from Tampa. I guess he works with FDLE or something. Mm -hmm. And he knows, you know, um, the case or whatever. And he was just telling me um, that I need to be careful and that basically, I, you know, I'm just being like, manipulated and, you know, used to, you know, change, to, you know, kind of protect him. Um, and so I started to realize that that was, you know, definitely the truth. And I didn't, I didn't realize, um, you know, how, um, 
how angry he was with me. Um, and I don't know. I mean, oh goodness, I guess how to use it, but there's a. Uh, That before he paid for the double tree, he'd actually dropped me off at work, and I think I told you about that when I was dropped off at work, and um, he, we were in his SUV, and he was, you know, yelling and um, being aggressive, and and just telling me, you know, screaming at me, and and telling me I had to fix, you know, the problem, um, that if I didn't fix it, he didn't know what he was going to do. If he was just getting, that was at the point that I started to realize that he was anger, you know, with me that I, and he didn't, um, initially said that he was, um, and so anyway, so he told me that, you know, he would fix it, um, that, I'm sorry, that, yeah, that he would help me if I fixed it, if I went to his attorney today, this morning, um, I told him I was, checking out in my hotel at 11 and I got it pushed to 12 but I took my checking out in my hotel at 11 and um I was like I don't know you know what to do or you know gonna go I said I need to like focus on that and he said well if you write the statement at Amir's office um then um I, I'll go ahead and I'll you know I'll pay for another room um and you'll be fine before like 11 o'clock. Um, and so, I don't know, I just felt like, I don't know, I just felt like I, you know, had to, you know, kind of had to do, you know, what he was telling me to do. I just felt like I didn't know what to do. He was sending me texts, like, I saw him um, yesterday. We didn't do anything. He came to the hotel and he sent me a text and he told me, you know, um, you know, he was in the text. He was just telling me, you know, I had four minutes to come to the lobby, or he was going to leave, and um, he's—I don't know. I just—I don't know what to say. I um. You still have copies of all these text messages? Yeah. All right, I'll need you to send me those when you're done. We're done here today at Shirley You got to go. We get done here. You got to go quickly back to the hotel and check out. Yeah. Um, all right, I know you said he was screaming at you, he was hollering at you. Oh, has he done that multiple times or just one time? No, it's been multiple times where he screams at me and he gets like aggressive and he bangs things and, you know, he... He well, says... Well, like, how many times have you seen him since uh, Um... I would say like four, maybe four. I'm trying to think. I think it's been four times that I've seen him. Hey, but you talked to him quite a bit on the phone? No, we don't really talk a lot on the phone anymore. We must just, like, text. All right, you have these text messages, right? Yeah. And they're all timestamped? They should be, yeah. Okay. Um, you have not made any contact with his attorney since that one time? Uh, the last time I was in contact with him was probably, like, last week. His attorney? Mm-hmm. Yes. What did you tell the attorney? He wanted me to come in again. He wanted me to um, make the statement. Um, and Jeremy wanted me to do the statement too. And that was it. I'd never, I'd never met with him. I'd never done it. So. Um, okay, so you've not made any official statement to his attorney at all? No. We never. And if we. Okay. And just so I understand, when you eventually do meet with the state attorney for us, your state will stay the same. Is that what I understand? I'm not, not going to change it because okay. if I change it. I just want to make sure. I, uh, well, yeah, if I change it, then it's lying, and I'm not going to do that. I'm just clarifying that right yeah. now. Okay. Um, has there anything else that gone on that you've not told us about? Mm -hmm. And the other thing, I don't know. I'm asking. I don't know what's been going on the last. Um. <laughs> And specifically with Jeremy, is there right. any? Right, I understand. Um, I 
No, not that I can. And how have you left it with Mr. DeWitt today? He told me that he was going to come. Because Amir is, um, he wanted me to do it today, obviously. So um, he could book the room today. And I, he wanted me to contact Amir's office. So I did contact their office. I already knew he wasn't going to be there um, because he's like really busy and always in. Why did you contact the office if you weren't going to change the statement? Because that's what Jeremy told me to do. But why were you going to contact him? What were you going to tell him about changing the statement? No, I was just going to. I mean, you have to. Go ahead. You're just going to drag it on, is what you're, what you're doing. I mean,. I don't know. If what, what you need to do is, honestly, I can't. You're a grown adult. I can't tell you, you know, what to do. You're a witness in criminal in a criminal investigation right now. You have to break contact, Mr. Dewitt. Do you understand that? Yes. I, I don't know. I mean, because honestly, this is getting a little bit peculiar on how this is going right now. I mean, you were in a witness in an initial investigation. It, the contact has been made again with this individual. You slept with this individual. Um, I, he's asking you to recant your statement. He's asking you to go to his attorney's office and recant your statement. You, that can't happen, okay? This, I mean, if you're going to continue to be a witness for the state of Florida, all this stuff has to stop so that we can get this, this case going forward. Um, you said you're... Um, after you leave here today, you said you're moving out. You're moving in with the family and stuff like that. I get that. Um, has he, just so I understand, other than the two days which he paid for via price line? What's up? Yeah, so I've been trying to contact you since 7 o'clock this morning. Yeah, okay, I'm at work. What's up? Okay, but you don't have to talk to me like that. Okay. I'm at work. What's up? Okay. When you booked a hotel, you booked it through a third party. Okay. Why did you do that? What does that matter? It matters because now you have to come with me to check in. No, you don't. You can use the credit card on file. They don't have a credit card on file. Dear, it says right on the website that I can pay for you in advance. They were saying they don't have a credit card on file. They don't need, you I, don't need my credit card on file. What are you talking about? I'm confused. What do you need? Forget it, Jeremy. Why did you go through Priceline? Is it because you always go through Priceline? Because I booked it through online. Right. Let, but I asked you to call that number and then we wouldn't have to deal with any of that. Okay, they can call me anytime, or I can call them. So, I talked to Priceline. They were very nice and very helpful. Um, for some reason, their security is not degraded because they, they decided to list all the hotel stays that you've had in the past year. Okay, great. So I thought you were broke. Because I stay at hotels for business? What the fuck does that have to do with anything? business. I'm just wondering. What is your issue with me? The fact that you go behind my back always, repeatedly, trying to find and divulge information that's not oh for you to know. Like just going to Priceline and finding out my history of staying at hotels. First of all, I call Priceline because okay. the hotel... The Doubletree told me to contact Priceline, so I contacted them. They are the ones who gave me all the information. I didn't ask for it. Okay. All right. Listen, I'm at work. What can I help with right now? Oh, my God. I just don't understand. It's like nothing I do is right. I'm, I'm because not you haven't that. fixed anything that you've done. You keep telling me you will, and then you, uh, then you say you did, and then in another conversation, right. you say you never have. So you have oh, not okay. corrected anything. You haven't no, called and fixed anything. You haven't that's talked to I anyone. Oh, so, can okay. I can, we, let me, can I have to finish a sentence, please? Thank you. So this just happened yesterday afternoon, okay? The first time I got on the phone with this woman was like, what, 1 o'clock? 
And then I got back on the phone with her again around like 4, 30, 4, 40 yesterday. It hasn't even been a full 24 hours yet. She's still supposed to be calling me back. Yes, but you still and, haven't told her you wrote a false statement. End of no, story. First of, all, first of all, I didn't write a false statement. I how is that? Saying that. How, I didn't write a false statement. How is it not a false statement? The statement that I wrote is what they told me to write. Now, whether you want to call it a false statement, or whether I'm going to say that it's something that they told me to write. Dear, I don't care whether they told you to write it or a leprechaun fucking told you to write it. You wrote it, you signed it, it's a false statement. At the end of the day, I don't give a fuck how you wanna word it. You wrote it, you signed it, end of story. You better make her understand that they made you say that. I, I, I and that's what I'm doing, but I'm not gonna talk, and my issue with you, that you're trying to take me down with you in some big, I don't know what the hell this is about, but you're trying to take me down take with me you. Take me down with you? How is that? If you call and fix what you did by lying or having them lie for you and then you signing it, there's nothing for me to go down with. So what are you talking about? What I'm saying is, is that you're telling me that I made some sort of false statement and what I've been telling you is that they told me what to say. Okay, so when you say but then when you wrote it and signed it, that makes it a false statement. And unless you okay. make everyone on that side of the fence understand that, they believe you are writing a true statement. Okay. So my thing is, is that I have contacted the woman. You have seen that I have contacted the woman. I, I haven't seen anything. I've seen that the fact that you sent me a screenshot of your 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 contacts, not your call logs, not your duration of phone call. Logs. Okay. Honey, honey, look at it again, and it'll tell you the date, the time, and how long the call was, and it was an outgoing call. Okay. It'll show you. Listen, I'm again. really I'm really at work. I don't have time for this. What else can I help with right now? So, like, am I going to see you today? Because it's Wednesday. Not today. I'm at the mosque today. You told me I was going to see you on Wednesday, so that was another lie? It was never a lie. I said I work at the mosque. I need to see if I can get it to covered. I told you that very clearly. And I don't no. know if that's going to happen yet. I just I, I just feel like you're against me completely, and I don't, I'm just trying. I'm not against I'm you. I'm trying to do my fucking job with you calling every five minutes and texting every five minutes and asking what I'm doing and where I'm at and how I'm doing it. Listen. I won't, I won't call you or text you anymore. Okay? I didn't say you can't call me or text me anymore. I said I'm trying to do my job. I will be happy if I can get away today to see you. If I can't, there is nothing I can do about it. My company and my job comes before sure enough you and my wife and my family and my life so you're not doing me any favors you don't have to do me I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying my hardest here what are you trying your hardest to get everything taken care of what is that to talk to this lady and tell her that I felt like some parts of the statement you keep were, saying uh, some parts what parts I don't, I don't understand what that means. Well, honey, Some Ashley parts. Is, can I finish? The Ashley Madison is a fact. No, that is a I, fact. I can't change. I never said tell her that you lied about that. Exactly. I don't... That's what I'm saying. Some parts. That's why I said some parts. Okay. Listen, I'm okay. at work. I really have to go, okay? All right. We'll do whatever right. you need to do. All right. Bye. Has he... Just to understand, other than the two days which he paid for via Priceline, the Double Tree Hotel over on Kirkman... Um, has he paid for anything else or offered you anything else or threatened you in any way? I mean, I can't. I mean, of course he offered, he said he would pay for a week at the double tree if I did what I was supposed to do today. So, back to the same hotel that you were staying at before? Right. Okay. Is there anything else that he's offered to do? Is there anything his attorney has offered to do? Not um, monetary, like not monetarily, no. Well, what do they offer? Um, he said that I could write 
or rewrite a statement and he would help me, you know, get it over to the state attorney's office and he would, it would be in a way where I wouldn't, it wouldn't seem like I'm, you know, lying about anything. That was it. All right. Any questions? All right. Is there anything else before we can close? I take the report on this off report to state. Is there anything else that you need to tell us about what's been going on? I mean, I just feel like it's. I just I, I don't think you know. I think people don't understand. Well, maybe it seems peculiar because there you don't understand. You know. The situation that I'm in, there's like a level of, you know, desperation, and and then when you call around the shelters and there's nothing available, or they don't, um, you know, take children that are a certain age, and you don't know what, where you're gonna be. I I get I get you. You're in a desperate situation. I get right. that. I'm not arguing that point at all. Mm-hmm. I'm just asking you. I understand. You're a grown adult. You do what you're going to do. But can you have this case go forward with the state? Uh, as you as you being a witness, a credible witness, I, most likely, you know, we need you to stop having contact with Mr. DeWitt. Well, that's, yeah, that's fine. I mean, it, it's just because it, it, eventually it gets to a point where I understand it goes from desperate to, you know, it, it looks awkward in, in front of a jury, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, so the young lady that you've been dealing with that I met has been communicating with me and then also telling me what she's telling you guys. Um, okay, let's, let, if you wouldn't mind, because i got to make sure I have the details of what you're sure. to. This girl... And whoever she's working with, they're able to pull information off the internet and fucking tie it to me. In the beginning, they were hitting my Facebook. Then they started hitting my kick account, demanding things, asking for money, asking for clothes, telling me they were going to go to my funeral homes. They were going to go to the police, that on and on and on. All of a sudden, they, she hit me up on Ashley Madison and was interested in me. We met two times. All of a sudden, the threats and the demands went more to the point where they were threatening to go to my wife and this and this and that. And I needed to take money and drop it off at at parking lots in the dumpster. I had to take shoes for a guy one time. I had to take clothes. I 100% above board. My guys, if they even do stupid things, when the GPS shows that their lights are running, if they're not on a funeral, I immediately fire them. And Mr. Dewey, there's no, I mean, based on your past criminal history, let's be can- candor about this, okay? You do have a prior history with right. you know, posing as a law enforcement officer. Yes. I didn't know until two and a half weeks ago or two weeks ago, whatever it was, when I got contacted by FDLE that there was an ongoing relationship still with the TUI, which I and your attorney would even probably say they don't probably does not understand why you still have some sort of I try to keep her away from me and I now I won't lie I am stringing her along to get the information that I needed because she keeps saying she's going to go and file statements that I'm pulling people over that we have guns that that's what okay. I was trying to that's what I was trying to get to your point I know you want to hear from him but I've had this conversation Sarah called me right um I worked for Lawson back in the 90s. I was a prosecutor. Sarah and I may have overlapped. I don't remember how, when she started. Right. I left in 01. Um, but we have very good rapport. She knows me. I know her. There's no issues there. My concern when he called me was, you're worrying about something that's a, non, a non-issue. a non But right. he, to his defense, made sense when he explained it to me. He said, yeah, but I've seen how the system can kind of grind you up. The, the this, this history, this sex offense stuff has put him into the mindset where it all it doesn't take much more than a false accusation to completely fuck you and so he's always on heightened alert about what people say so she's she's because i have polygraph after polygraph where i tell the truth and i never touch that fucking girl and polygraph after polygraph and yet i still went to jail for it my goodness 
can you let anyone finish speaking so we know what's going on? Yes. It's because true. apparently when we ask you, you start going off left field, you, you, we need you to stay in your lane. Okay? Right now, you're not staying in your lane. You're going off talking about some shit that we don't really care about. And here's the thing. Okay? Now your lawyer is trying to explain to us exactly what's going on, and then you interrupt them. So here's the thing. This is the understand the story, us, though, In order detective. for us to sit here and listen to you, okay, you have to have some control. Okay? When we ask you for something, that's what you need to talk to us about, okay? If he's speaking, let him speak so he can clearly explain to us what's going on. Yes. Because uh, uh, right now, you're not able to. You're emotional about it. He's trying to explain and defend you on your behalf. Whatever, whatever he's trying to defend, all we're trying to understand here is this. If you're alleging a crime, what is the crime? And what was the act that did? Per- Personally, I would have left her alone. I would have stayed away from her. You playing junior detective, I have no understanding why you're trying to do that. I, in 18 years of being a cop, okay, almost, I'm almost 18 years now, I'm not understanding why a witness and a suspect in a case, a felony case, are somehow back in a sexual relationship or some sort of relationship together. Or, I mean, I, I just oh, watched video. We just watched video where she's sitting on your lap and everything like that. The two issues that we're here for is one, I think this this lady's crazy. I do think she's coercing and pressuring my client to do things that are improper, and I don't trust the validity or accuracy of her statement. Now, I would tell you right now, don't ever contact me at 1215 in the middle of the night again. Don't ever do it again. I'm going to tell you that right now, because I will file stalking charges quicker than you can say your name, okay? Don't do that again. I've already explained to you, business hours is when when I work. If you have a problem or emergency with your registration, contact us immediately the next day, and we'll handle it. But... I mean, don't, during normal business hours is when we handle business. Do you understand? Right. Okay. Now, all I, we're concerned about is FDLE Lee contacted me saying that there was inappropriate behavior between the two of you and to find out what was going on. I mean, initially, does it look odd? Yeah, it looks really odd that the two of you are continuing to talk. She calls me from 10 different don't phone answers. numbers. You don't have to answer. Yeah. I, I. Well, but she's jerking his chain. I mean, and I, I get it. But you know. then seek an injunction against her. Your attorney. That's what I was coming to do the other day when I was driving here, and you called me. I said I'm on my way to file some kind of restraining courthouse. order. Go to the phone. Oh, go to the courthouse. One for harassing phone calls, stalking. They have levels, okay? Okay. But yeah, she comes to my know. office and it's just. Damn. Yeah, you Roger, listen. detective. You gonna listen? Okay. Call nine one one and start the paperwork process. Okay. You don't just. Answer the phone call, string her along, as you say, and then to us and complain that she keeps calling you. You're trying to build a case, and it's not your job to build a case. Does that make sense? In a way, I'm not trying to build a case. I'm trying to prove that I'm not doing these things. Jeremy, but you can't say he, she's stalking you and harassing you when you're stringing her along, answering her phone calls. But we both know they used, I, I, or you used, the Ashley Madison and kick so you could come into my house and search my house for weapons. I understand that. Mr. This Dwight, is why I'm is freaking out. There was a crime that was alleged, and we were checking it based on that, okay? And given your past criminal history, of course we'd want to, okay? I have a past criminal history of violence and weapons? No. You have a past criminal history of posing as a law enforcement officer? One time. Okay, that, that, that's it. That's a history right then and there. Yeah. As a law enforcement officer, one time. Okay, that, that that's, that's it. That's a history right then and there. Yeah, and that was I was an explorer, and I showed my explorer credentials because I okay. didn't want to get arrested. Mr. Dewey, what I would want to do is have this interview continue to go round and round. Roger, trying to re- I understand history. If it, you please provide me the statement by Monday, I'll look at everything you give me. I'll look at the video that you've provided. If there is a, if you're alleging a crime that's been occurred, and I can somehow prove it. Of course, we'll file charges. I think it's more a matter of of demonstrating the lack of credibility of your of your witness, but that goes towards mitigating the, the case. Right, and a lot of this stuff would have come out in deposition anyway. Have you let your attorney handle your case? Well, I was under the I, I was under the impression to this day that she's going to. She made it sound like and just just he's, the other day, freaking out over nothing. Just we're, on we're, the other day, she texted me and called me saying that you guys were. Co- that's why I asked yeah, you on right. Thursday he, 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 that he they were coming to arrest me for, arrest me for arrest tampering like, with a witness. So, Mr. Dewitt, what I, my advice to you is this: if you have anything further, contact your attorney. Okay. Roger. 
And that's what I would do. Because honestly, this is your voice piece. He's got, he went to advanced schools. He's paid to be your voice piece. Let him be your voice piece, okay? You're emotional. He's not. Okay. So when you sit there and say, well, why didn't you call me and say, hey, you didn't do this? We have this thing called discretion, okay? And we use it every day. It just depends on the totality of the circumstances, okay? But I want you to look at big picture things. The, 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 big, the big picture also, I want you to understand something right now. I don't need a sex offender on social media that's unregistering the counts because this stuff is monitored, okay? Picking up women. I don't. I don't need that. That's a problem for me. But that's a problem for the state. That's why they have you register your Internet accounts. You understand? I understand that. That's and I understand that's that error now. I, We're not having that conversation right Roger. Now. Okay. That's fine. Is there anything else you want to say? Oh. He doesn't need to say anything else. Just the officer's discretion. No. Yeah. Oh my. All right. Time now is 11 to 11. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Stop your bitch. Oh my fucking God. Come on. Come on. Watch it. Move her right. Move her right. Move this dumb fuck. I got a stupid fucking white truck. He keeps trying to cut across. Watch it. Move her right. I got a gold car just pulled in. White. Roger. Get this light. coming up and they're cutting in. I need you to move it soon, brother. I know, I know. Roger, get to me, get to me, get to me. They're about to hit the next green. Get to me hard, 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 please. We're losing this. Stop! I got a red vehicle cutting through. Just ran the red light with the whole escort. I need you soon. We're at lights. Watch it move right, move right. I figured you would like this. All your siren shit and stuff. I'm losing this. Where are you at, Bubba? Yes, immediately. He's in the left. Yes. Hey! I got people cutting into the funeral all along the strip here. Don't do it. I had a guy just cut across. Motor one's moving. I, I don't know where the last is, and it's all cut off. What are you doing? What the fuck does it look like I'm doing, dumb fuck? Get the fuck over before you find out. Stop pretending you're a police officer. Listen, Stop motherfucker, it. I know what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. What you need to do is figure it the fuck out before you start talking shit and cutting us off. I'm not do, cutting anyone. Go ahead and pull your little phone out. I'm not cutting Do your little Google off. search and figure out what we're doing and what I we legally allow. Good. 
then back off and give us room. I'm not, you're a, I'm not interfering with you at all. You are, by you are running blocking, along. You've been blocking traffic. Yeah, I need you to stay to the side, sir. Dude. That's what the legal I'm law is. Go back and look it up. 316, call good, good. call, call now. Please, 911, right now. I'm not calling 911. Go ahead, call them 911 right now. I'm not gonna call 911. Tell them it's, it's on video, emergency. too. Let them know all of us it's on video. We also you have your tag number, so please let me know. Escort you to your two. Watch this fucking guy. This is too much. Too much. Too much. Too much. Too far. Okay. What kind of guns are they? The, I don't know. I haven't touched them in forever. That's in a bag that's been there for years. Did you touch one like three days ago? A pistol? That's the less lethal. Okay. The one that I have for my company. You carry a less than lethal it shoots. that has a flashlight and everything on it that looks like basically my semi-automatic gun. It shoots it shoots OC rounds. Why do you shoot OC rounds as an escort company? Do you have a security license? Some of my guys do, yes. Do you have a security I license? I don't, but it's not illegal, and Florida statute says as long as I'm it's considered less lethal I'm asking and it's in plain view, I'm allowed to wear it. In fact, motors with... <laughs> Slow down. I'm no, asking the question because the question I have here is because you told Jennifer that you once were special forces. You also told Jennifer you worked for the Oviedo Police Department. And you also I never told said I worked for Oviedo Police Department. Okay, well she didn't say you're working there now. She said oh. you once worked there. Okay, so no, I was an explorer there, and I explained that to her. Well, that's not what she understood. She understands that you were law enforcement. You didn't tell them that you used to be a police officer. Neither the uh, Tampa police officer. I told them that I used to be with an explorer unit out of Oviedo. I was an Oviedo police. Uh, I served as a cop. I served as a cop. I served as a cop. I was an Oviedo police officer. Uh, and then I served for 12 years in the U.S. Army. Okay. As a major. I did the army. I I was young and dumb, and I wanted action, so I joined the army. Was a ranger, and then I went SF, and then. Furthermore, she, apparently you've been telling her you've been doing traffic stops. I, I never said traffic stops. What have you been doing? Detective. I'm asking. We work traffic all the time. That's all I ever told her. She asked me what we do. Are you authorized to stop a car? No, I never made a traffic stop. I said we stopped. Please stop. Please stop yelling. I'm not yelling at you. Okay, stop yelling at me. Because, detective, this is bullshit. Okay, stop yelling you at me right me now. You got me all day on that. I didn't know. I didn't know I had to. I thought that was. What I'm, what I'm concerned. Bullshit. Okay, what I'm concerned about, that's, and this is Jeremy. What I'm concerned more, not so much this as I'm concerned with, because that is that that is. Detective, you can down, put me on a polygraph. I haven't pulled anyone over. I do my job. I've been honest for fucking fifteen years. Okay, I haven't can, done anything wrong. Jeremy, I'm wrong. asking. Okay, can I can I can I talk? Stops? Can I talk? Can yes, I, detective. Okay, thank you. Can you stop yelling? Yes, detective. Okay, thank you. I'm not worried so much about this. Yes, this is important. This is a felony charge. This is punishable by each count five years in jail. Okay? That's Understand? Bullshit. Okay, but I'm more worried about a sex offender that has the appearance of a law enforcement officer.